Hello, and welcome to That Seems Unfortunate, the show where we talk about all the interesting events, gaming, and music news with heaps and piles of sarcasm. I'm Chris Vittorio, and I'm here with Steven Bridenstine. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing very well today, and I'm doing, doing even well. better because this is a very special week where we are joined by drummer for wonderful band Alteris and close friend of mine, and also now Chris's, yes. Seth Donchus. What's up, guys? How you doing? Doing exceptionally well. Um, Good, man. Almost better than yesterday. <laughs> almost. Almost. almost better. Yeah. For those that follow either me or Seth on Twitter, you may have seen that uh, we we had some some hiccups uh, during the recording. I messed up, guys. I, I, did, I did bad on recording. I didn't do no, it. No, it's technical difficulties. We don't have to pass blame on anyone. This is just technical no, it's difficulties. Me. We talked for an hour and a half. You blame it on the software. Yeah. He, you're right. I'll blame it on the software. Because yeah. it's the software's fault. Yeah. Yep. You're right. we, we, we had a decent episode. It was, it was only okay. I'm sure this one will be just even better, and you won't you yes. won't even feel like you missed anything. That's yeah. right. We certainly won't miss anything because we didn't miss anything, so we get all, <laughs> yes. all the time. Swear to God. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to the first topic, which is already like a different perspective because it's the World Series. And while we were only talking about Game 7 in theory last night, we're talking about Game 7 for real tonight. And while I would much rather have been talking about Indians World Series champions, uh, I guess we could talk about Game 7 since it's happening. I guess. Um, last night was um, a, a game of baseball. That's <laughs> the best Can't way to describe it. Can't quite call it a nail-biter. Uh, yeah, we lost about two innings in. Yeah, yeah, we really did. And lost even more, like three innings in when they hit the home <laughs> Yeah, man, the Cubs looked so good last night. And, uh, I mean, we didn't look any better. But, uh, I don't thing, know, man. That was, that, was, that was a rough game. I was I was heartbroken last night. Yeah, the thing was, outside of Tomlin, like, just completely dropping the ball. In, well, no. Literally. Tyler Naquin dropped the ball. He's the one who yeah. dropped the ball. Um, oh, dude, he had a he had a rough game. Josh I mean, Tomlin he's... just dropped the ball really fast and in bad spots. Uh, but Tyler Nick would yeah. drop the ball a lot. Did he uh, like literally drop yeah. the ball? Yeah, no, he was an outfielder. Him and I I don't know who decided to put Naquin and Lonnie in the same outfield anyway. They're both like younger guys, uh, but they had a lot of miscommunications. And Naquin, more often than not, it was his fault, and he created a lot of errors that ended up turning into runs. Um, yeah, but man, outside is... of that and Tomlin, like those two situations, we played as well as we would normally play. Like it wasn't like a yeah. bad game. We got runs on Arietta, which is well, I think it might have been on Arietta or the pitcher that replaced him. But we got runs relatively early. We were getting yeah. runs somewhat consistently throughout. If you take I away mean, that grand slam, it was what five five three five four five, five four. three five four no five 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 three yeah sorry it was it was um, a close game. Yeah, yeah, that and that grand slam, slam that, shouldn't have happened. That, it should have been kid, no errors. Had a heck of a game. Should have been fine. Um, yeah. So I wasn't super concerned. I was concerned for Tomlin, but I mean Tomlin's done for the season. We got one game left, and he won't be pitching in it. So, I mean, I just hope our boy Kluber can pull it off tonight, man. Yeah, hopefully I the mean, uh, the team sees it the same way that we do, and that it yeah, was not a I bad mean, game. Yeah, I hope they just shake it off, and then uh, we got. We got the best bullpen in all of baseball. I mean, we got Brian Shaw tonight. We got Andrew yeah. Miller, Cody Allen, who didn't even, like, those three didn't even play yesterday. Yeah, we, so we got well-rested, like, yeah. great pitchers coming up. It's 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 our four best, if I could say it. Like, it's Kluber into Shaw into Allen into Miller. Like, right. that's, that's a dream pitching scenario. Yeah, I mean, we got the dream team uh, pitching staff, so. Yeah. I mean, we just got to get the bats around, man. That's all. That's all we got to do. We just got to yeah. keep getting runs and holding them on defense. And, and I don't Kip, know. Kipnis was really working yesterday. Kipnis, yeah, man. He, he hit oh, that dude, home Kipnis run. Was he, on was, fire. he was doing really well. So I want to punch can... Joe Buck in the face, though, man. He, he <laughs> is so he's so biased. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh you got to be used to it at some point. Anti-Cleveland oh, is just man. the way of life. Yeah. It's hard to it's hard to side yeah. with the any no, Cleveland but, team. You're right. You're right. But overall, not a bad game, so. Hey, Cavs. All of a sudden, you just see uh, Drew Carey jump into the whole thing. Cleveland rocks! Yeah. Like, we got to have all the people out there. The we got to have antithesis. Drew Carey. Yep. We got to have, uh, what's his name? Charlie Sheen. We got we to gotta yep. get the whole Cleveland squad to, to be there. LeBron, even though he's a White Sox fan. Or not a White Sox fan. Yeah. No, he's a Yankees fan. 
D Wade's a White Sox fan. But we'll have LeBron there. He can be there. He's fine. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's we fine. just gotta get the whole just the Cleveland good feels all around. That's right. Who else is from who else is famous from Cleveland? That that's it. Some presidents. That's about it. <laughs> it's about a lot it. of presidents. <laughs> yeah. Rover Cleveland. I don't think he was from Cleveland. The door. Yeah. Hey. It's close. Same thing. Last name, city of origin. I Good mean, enough. They're very similar. That's, a, that's right. Good enough. Yeah. If there's a city that happened to be called Bridenstine, uh, I think a lot of people would question it. But regardless, I would still be from there. Even that's if I'm right. not. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Cavs, they're undefeated. <laughs> yeah, Four games so, in the season. Th- that's good. That's solid. Yeah, so, I mean, outside yeah. of this and terrifying Game UFC 7. Fighter. Oh, yeah, we got the UFC fighter. We got we got a lot of things. Uh, yeah. Lake Erie we Monsters. Have the UFC fighter? Yeah, the heavyweight champions from Cleveland. Really? Yeah. He's actually pretty good. I watched that fight. Um, and I, I don't really like UFC, but... I mean, I got to root for the guy from Cleveland. I mean, I enjoy UFC because, I mean... I, I just like seeing people beat the crap out of each other. That's just me. Yeah, I mean, but it, it makes me happy. That the guys from Cleveland. I my thing on UFC is that I'm I'm more into boxing. Uh, I think it's okay. it's more like technical, and it's yeah. more. But while UFC, there's a lot of like dead air in UFC fights, and and then you get fights like uh, Conor McGregor and the guy that he punched in the face, and then he was down in like 16 seconds or something. Yeah, I don't know. I just I like UFC. It's just I prefer boxing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the positives in Cleveland sports. Hopefully, we can tack another positive on tonight. Uh, so moving on, we're going to talk a little bit more about television. Uh, we're going to preface by saying we're not going to be talking about Walking Dead because um, Chris has, did not see the new episode on Sunday. I didn't see it. And if you saw last week's episode or listened to it, you would know that I also didn't see it by choice. So. Um, <laughs> No, see, if you listen to anything of, that we've done before, you'd know how upset I was at the season premiere. Yeah, and how I, how I was also upset, but for a completely different reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we won't be won't be doing Walking Dead, but I do want to preface and talk about uh, another show, and I can also talk about this is a great thing. I can also talk about the new episode of Lucifer that was on last night, or that was on Monday night that I watched on Hulu last night. So you Ooh, see, you that's something new that I wasn't able to talk about during yesterday's episode. Was- Although, to be fair, uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about. The episode was good, but it was kind of like one of the more filler uh, relationship-building episodes, which are hugely necessary in television, but there's never really a whole lot to talk about on them. But uh, the show I do want to talk about is Luther. Uh, Luther, for those that don't know, is a BBC show. Uh, it's on Netflix, the first four series, as they call them in in britain television they don't call them seasons which is kind of weird but uh they don't no yeah they call them series um it's like a different series each time and they also because i think it's probably with how uh short the length is like they're Uh, mostly like four to six episodes per series unlike a, a u.s show seasons which are like 12 episodes plus yeah um but luther it's uh it's a crime drama uh one of the millions that exist there are like an infinite number of like crime dramas surrounding like any type of character personality trait for for like your lead but this one is surrounding a guy named john luther who's played by idris elba fantastic actor uh and wow that actually works perfectly i found out yesterday that he also is fighting mma now Oh, that's pretty cool. So that links perfectly <laughs> with the UFC talk. Yeah, he had his first... He's like 40 years old. He had his first uh, MMA fight recently, and he won. Uh, so that's awesome. That just makes me respect him even more. Like, how cool can you get? Um, it's amazing. Yeah, but Luther is one of those uh, cop shows where the cop is... It's like a good cop, but he doesn't always like follow every rule, and he's kind of like... He finds his own methods that not are always necessarily legal, but they get the job done and they have good intentions and things like that. Again, there's a lot of shows like it, but the special part of Luther is the fantastic BBC writing because BBC shows, for whatever reason, are just naturally better written, uh, I've found, uh, when it comes to shows from the US. Uh, And then Idris Elba is, again, incredible actor. He really just sells the character 
and just draws you in to like really connect with the character of Luther uh, as he does all these different things. I highly recommend the show. Again, first four series are on Netflix. Um, they they have about six episodes each, or six four to six, like I said. So all an hour plus ish. Um, so it's not a super long watch to catch up, but it uh, is definitely worth your time. So highly recommend Luther. How about you guys? What shows have you been watching or want to discuss? Uh, I've just been watching cartoons. Big Bang oh. Theory, great season. Uh, Modern Family. Um, I'm into those those sitcoms. Yeah, I, I always love yeah. a good sitcom. Absolutely, I love those shows. Um, I'm not I'm not a real big TV guy. I don't watch a lot of TV. I I, sh- I used to, but like I I should start doing that again. I want to get back into shows like like Gotham. Yeah. Um, Is love that show that any show. good? I've that heard nothing phenomenal. but positive things about it. I have to start watching it. It's I amazing. I want to start watching that. Yes, I recommend it. Oh man, I love my show New Girl with Zoe De Chanel. <laughs> love that show. That show seems cool. Uh, yeah, that show is really good. Have you ever watched Scrubs? Uh, part, uh some episodes. Yeah, uh, I've watched Scrubs. Scrubs is like a lot of people. Their favorite sitcoms are like How I Met Your Mother or Friends. Those yeah, are the two right. big ones. I liked both of those shows, but mine is Scrubs. It's got to be Scrubs. Like, yeah, I've seen I, I, what I've oh. seen of Scrubs. I really liked, and it was really funny. So I've seen the whole series. Like, I've seen every episode. It's so good. See, I've mm-hmm. never heard of it, and like now that we're bringing up sitcoms, we have to mention the late, the great Seinfeld. Oh yeah, oh, there you Seinfeld's go. Seinfeld, amazing. Seinfeld. Seinfeld is always like the go-to like top sitcom. Mm-hmm. It's a great one. Yeah, I, I I've, I've always loved sitcoms. Like all of them. Uh, like even the older like really popular ones like King of Queens, Everybody Loves Raymond, like stuff like that. Everybody Loves Raymond is actually really good. Yeah, they're all like great uh, just shows, like great sitcoms. I like sitcoms. It's hard to miss with sitcoms, especially like with me. Um, a lot of the more like off-color ones, like have you ever seen The League? No. The League is fantastic. Um, it follows like a group of friends that all play fantasy football together. But similar to uh, if you've ever seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia, all of the characters are, like, terrible people. Really? Like, yeah. Like, their their whole thing is they do terrible things to each other, and they, like, put fantasy football ab- above, like, real-life things, and it creates these, like, hilarious situations. It's it, it was, like, one of my favorite shows. It just ended after its seventh season uh, this past year. But all, I think all seven seasons are also on Netflix. That show is hilarious you don't even need to be into fantasy football like you could not care about football not care about fantasy football it's still a hilarious show so sitcoms in general are just really great the best yep they're the best they're all yeah they're like really good go-tos like if you just need something to watch yes sir so moving on to i guess it's been two days now uh yesterday it was one day but now it's been two days since um halloween halloween was this past monday yeah. Uh, oh my what God. is? And so, Chris, uh, I know you celebrated it pretty exceptionally. Oh yeah, I <laughs> spent that whole time fixing things in a retail store, but not out of the goodness of my heart. No, because they were paying me, and because I was on the schedule. He was hitting the grind. He's hitting all the right. grind. Halloween. There you go. The the scariest of all things. Just yeah, exactly. Job. You want a real horror story? You work retail during any holiday. Yeah, that's the funniest thing. Like, real life is generally more terrifying than, like, scary movie situations. I would rather be, like, in in a room with, like, a serial killer trying to escape him than to be going out with friends and, while I'm on the way, getting called into some crappy job. Oh, yeah. That's really terrifying. That would be like, yeah, a, oh, no, what do I do? But, like, serial killer, it's like, I guess I only have one option, run or die. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you, your options are kind of clear-cut in a serial killer situation. But when it comes to awful jobs, infinite possibilities. All terrible. Every time. Yeah. Seth, how did you spend your uh, your Halloween? Um, I actually spent my Halloween passing out candy, you know? Just kept it uh, pretty simple. Um, yeah. It was funny because my dad... Um, he like walked outside when I was passing out candy. He's like, "What are you doing tonight?" I said, "This," and then that, like nothing. He's like, "You're not going to any parties?" I said, "No, not really." And then he goes, "Dude, you're 20 years old. 
You're not going out on Halloween? You're lame. I got called lame by a 46-year-old man, so... <laughs> hey, he just doesn't uh, know. Lame! He just doesn't I know. know how I, great I was like, a, a basic Halloween is. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, dude, you're... Oh, man, you're crazy. I yeah. was like... I was speechless. I was like, wow, I should maybe reevaluate my life, but... Yeah. No, no, like, no, no. No. Don't reevaluate your life. Don't let anyone tell you how to live your life on your holidays. Right. Especially... <laughs> yeah. Especially... You do My your dad. own thing. Yeah, yeah man. Especially our parents. Yeah. Parents yeah. don't know anything about us. Totally yeah. trying to make my parents proud, but who cares? Yeah. yeah. Teenage this, angst! This, yeah, this That's... podcast just got 80% more angsty. Heck yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's so punk rock now. I love it. Oh, yeah. Well, Halloween, like, well, fall in general. Fall is just the casual season. It like, is. Like, in summer, you're, you're party, like, you're out partying, or I'm never out partying, but... In summer, yeah, that's more of the hype, like, out doing stuff and getting things done because it's like you don't have any worries. You're not in school. You're not doing all this stuff. So you can go out and enjoy your summer. Spring is like the leading into summer where you're, like, building up that, that energy and the weather's getting warm. Winter, yeah. you're just trying not to dive various frostbite-related events. <laughs> and, then, and then Christmas comes around and you cheer for a little bit and then you're back to not dying from frostbite. But fall is like the calm down. Like it's you just got done with summer. You just did all that stuff. Now you're getting back into the swing of things. The weather's cooling down. It's the it's the casual season. So Halloween is like the epitome of that casual season. Yep. I can't imagine going crazy on Halloween. See, I'm a Kent State is my college that I'm currently in, and they are party central for Halloween. Like yeah. downtown was apparently crazy i didn't ever see it i wasn't anywhere near downtown um that weekend but i spent my my halloween well the weekend at least at a nice fire where we carved some pumpkins and we smashed them a little bit but uh we just kind of hung around and just chatted and just hung out like that's about that's it that's the way to that's the way yeah. to spend it man and that's the best way to do it i couldn't imagine getting all hype when it's like getting cold and also like you just did all that stuff during the summer like Where'd you find yeah. this energy? You've not only just done all the summer events, you're also taking classes every week. How did you find the energy to freak out one weekend? Like, uh, I couldn't party if I tried. Yeah. Um, so did it, did anybody dress up? I know you guys didn't really go out that much, but did um, anybody wear any costumes? I, I, oh, you know what? I did. I did. I dressed up as that stupid drummer from that lame band all terrace <laughs> wait didn't you didn't you uh have a costume at a show didn't i see that on twitter uh, actually yeah yeah we did we played a uh we played a halloween house show on october 15th actually right here in youngstown and mm. um uh, a few hundred people rolled through like 200 300 people um and i dressed up as popeye yeah but that show was like oh, that's especially, awesome. especially cool because like it was a, it was a house show so like we were literally set up in a living room and that held no more than like 40 people <laughs> and like people were just so cramped in and everyone was like moshing and crowd surfing and like the house i thought it was collapsing like the floor was like <laughs> indenting cool. and the amps yes. were shaking dude it was the greatest night of my whole life it was amazing yeah it was the costume was fan voted right you had a twitter poll that i yes it was either between that or goku I don't know and, if I voted in that. Uh, I remember you seeing gone it. Should have gone as Goku. I, yeah. I was thinking about it. I'm like, ah, uh, but here's the thing. Like, I get, I get undressed when we play shows because it's hot. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. I, if I undress as Goku, man, he's got that's the, like he he wears a yeah. onesie. Yeah, he's got so the like, whole thing. I'm, yeah, so like I'm gonna be in my underwear, and I'm like, you know what? I kind of just want to be in my jeans still. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah, but, Popeye's much would easier. Would your fans care? Uh, I mean, they would, but not in the way that you're assuming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. They might have thought it was cool. Maybe. Maybe next year, because we're gonna have one. <laughs> next every year, year goes Goku. Yeah. Next year. Next year will probably be Goku. So. That's yes. awesome. That sounds like a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, definitely. My costume was a little less anything. Uh, <laughs> I went out. <laughs> Because I had a party on Saturday night, and I went out the night before because I remembered that I had no costume. So I walked to a Walgreens, which is about a mile away in about 40-something degree weather. So it was super cold. Um, 
But I walked out, and sure enough, day before the big party night in, in on campus, um, all of the costumes were pretty much gone. And it was a Walgreens in the first place, so they'd never really have costumes. Um, but I ended up getting away with a $4 uh, adult nerd costume, which was just a yeah. pair of glasses with some, not even tape, it was just like painted on in the center, like white. And then some checkered suspenders and a bow tie. And, and I went with that on top of like just normal clothes I would wear and called it nerd, or in my case, nerdier. Um, nerdier. And it, and it went over very well. Good, like good. Stereotypical nerd. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I texted a friend of mine that I like showing him what I got, and he was like, why would you just wear like more of your own clothes? And I was like, shut up. <laughs> I, I'm scary. I can be scary. So if I just go as more me, it's got to be terrifying. Exactly. Yeah, it was a cool costume. See, now, I did have a costume, like, for that uh, uh, concert I went to a couple days ago. But here, here's what you have to understand, okay? I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So, That's, in yeah. all, I spent, about, I spent about $10 to get one of the things I needed. So, I went as V from V for Vendetta. Oh, t- yeah, don't you just have the mask? Yeah, I have the mask and I have a hat that goes with it. But here's the thing. The robe was the trick. So, my parents and I come up with this ingenious idea. My mom looks at me and says, Hey, I have my graduation gown if you want to use that. It's black. Did you actually... Wait, did you really? Yeah, I put that on. (laughs) I put it on, it fit me, and it was scary. That's that's actually incredible. Um, You could have got away with a $3 cape. They, there were also capes at that Walgreens. <laughs> that was my <laughs> options. It was either the nerd costume or a big cape. No, you could have been super nerd. Yeah, super nerd. Spooky vampire nerd. Spooky vampire nerd. Yeah, nerd that was also an extra in Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to our, uh, our music discussion part of the show. Um, first, we're going we're gonna to talk about... Any new things we've been listening to. And I guess in Seth's case, it's just anything because uh, he hasn't been on the show. So he, we, no one's heard his music's, his music's, his, his, his Well, before. get ready for this. Yeah. I'm ready. All so, right. Well, I'm going to plug my man JT, Justin Timberlake. Number one, man. <laughs> my oh, favorite yes. artist of all time. I've loved him since I was two years old when he was in sync. Oh. Um, oh, man. I just... I, I have idolized him for years um, so I've been, I always listen to my JT um, and then from there I actually listen to everything but to be honest with you I listen to a lot of my own music I listen to my band a lot <laughs> um, yeah I mean who would yeah I mean it, any musician who says they don't listen to their own music is a damn liar yeah. they're a liar they're either lying or they're doing it horribly wrong yes exactly yeah. you got to you got to um you got to call them out on that so next time you hear a musician say oh I don't listen to my music be like that's crap yes yeah. you do if yes, you're you making do. music and it's not music lie. that you would exactly, listen to all the time dude. like what do you do I, like, I love my own music i mean i don't know how awful that sounds i try not to I don't know. No, no, I mean, that's, that's, that's the point of making music. You make yeah, the music that you love can it. love. So I, I mean, love it. Like people will hop in yeah. the car and they'll be like, "What's up?" And I'll be like, "Hold on, shh, I love this song." And they'll be like, "Is this you?" <laughs> and then I'll be like, "Yeah, this is us." Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, but no, I, I listen to everything and uh, anywhere from real, real heavy music to just you know the latest top forty pop song or. Yeah. You know, I mean, a splash of country. I'm not huge on country, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to. Even if you hate yeah. it, you still have to somewhat dude, enjoy yeah, country dude. if you're from... Of course, you have If you're to. from where we're from. Yeah, Absolutely. Dude. Yeah, it's it's 30%, or it's more like... It's a 50-50 split. I've never heard anything that isn't like the like mainstream pop or like some kind of hip-hop or country. It's nothing in between. The uh, The world of like indie, alternative, and metal are kind of... On the back burner, especially where we're from. Uh, yeah. So you yeah, kind of have right. just natural country roots in you, even if you yeah you for hate sure. It. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I also try to listen to like as much as I can. Uh, obviously, I have a few genres that I avoid. Country being one of them at all costs. Uh, at all costs. I I've gotten down to country. It's weird because uh I can't do mainstream country. 
like the the current country i can do older country which i guess wouldn't even be considered it'd be probably closer to blues um people like like johnny cash um who i realized is like the greatest person to ever exist oh what a great yeah i i say a lot of great things about a lot of musicians but (laughs) but when i like actually started talking about johnny cash with one of my friends um the more i talked the more i was just like this is so great like i've never really been able to truly appreciate how incredible as a musician and performer johnny cash like could be like ah he's so fantastic um like when you hear his songs you like not only know it's him but uh you you, like feel you feel what he wants you to feel like songs like uh gravedigger and oh yeah hurt especially hurt like you just it puts you in this mood like regardless of what what's going on like as soon as johnny cash like starts to sing you just enter johnny cash um enter johnny cash so yeah i can do stuff like that i'm actually i was on like a bit of a blues uh folk kick for a while where i would listen to a lot of uh kaleo i don't know if anyone's heard of them they're really great i have blues band from iceland fantastic band i listened to a ton of kaleo uh i can always get down with chet faker who's like a kind of an electronic blues kind of deal um and it's just anything along those lines but mainstream country i've more avoided uh this week especially i discovered a song well i didn't discover it my itunes discovered it but i took it um and it's called memories by someone named goody grace who i've never heard of uh goody grace i've never i've never heard of the guy i think it's a guy um but it features uh asap ant i couldn't remember his name before but it's asap ant again never heard of and jesse rutherford from the neighborhood and that's I love that guy, what, I love what really makes the song fantastic because like the other two are good like i actually didn't dislike either one of them like in their parts of the song but jesse rutherford just takes the song to a whole nother level like the neighborhood is fantastic um because of his his ability to just make similar to johnny cash but in a different realm of music where he just makes you feel things um and he does that in this song and and it's such a good song so yeah listen to that song if you can it's called memories i might have to check out anything else from goody grace see if it's uh if it lives up to the expectations of this song but yeah that's been a lot of what i've been discovering this week chris how about you anything new no no not a thing (laughs) no not a thing you know actually you know what here's something that's maybe a little out of place for me but i've been listening to a lot of bob dylan recently have you is it because of all the times we've talked about him on the show no no not at all it's (laughs) mainly because of my rock and roll the rock class at ysu because we finished talking about folk rock does that influence is that the reason why we've talked about him so many times on the show is because of that class yes ah okay that makes sense that is the exact reason (laughs) but no i've just been listening to a lot of bob dylan because i mean now i kind of just can't stop listening to bob dylan yeah it's never a bad thing yeah it's like bob... them and a little bit of jefferson airplane Ooh, i like them yeah bob They're... dylan bob dylan's been a frequent on this on the show i think bob dylan has been brought up at least once in every episode at least once <laughs> i don't know how i i don't really but he has been and it's pretty awesome i guess when you have to when you're talking about music bob dylan has to enter the conversation at some point wait did you did i ever tell you the story of when i was overseas like in europe when what when i was like overseas in europe all right we had this uh, tour guide, right? She was Italian, okay? <laughs> but at the end of the, uh, like, the two-week trip, right, she just <laughs> she just said, it's like, thanks for coming along for the ride. God bless you and God bless Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, um, well, I mean. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you want, if you, you know what? Everybody Bob needs Dylan, a little what? blessing. Yeah. Bob Dylan's no exception. Um, yeah, exactly. Bob Dylan's great. That reminded me of a funny story I saw today about tour guides. Uh, it was a tweet where um, someone was, it was like their first day on the job as a tour guide, and they were giving a tour around the Statue of Liberty, and when they were like, all right, and over here is the Statue of Liberty, someone asked, uh, what's it made out of? And she looks at the guidebook and looks up at him and goes, oh, you know, mostly liberty. <laughs> it was like I thought you were about super to say funny freedom. To yeah, freedom, liberty, you know, all those great made things. Made of freedom. Yeah, and we just Isn't harnessed it, like it copper, into a statue. Though? 
Yeah, it's, it's copper, I think. I'm pretty sure. But how much copper? Yeah, but that's significantly less cool than liberty. So oh, it's significant, yeah. It's like, what's made out of? Freedom. Nothing but freedom. Just freedom. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's move on to the reason why we, uh, well, maybe not the reason, but a good reason why you're here, uh, Seth, and that is to to talk about how great your band is. Oh, um, stop. <laughs> with Alta, if, you, if you somehow um, are listening to this podcast and don't know who Alteris is, please go check them out. Alteris, See, then what Alteris, is wrong with you? Yeah, you got something, you got you got a problem in your life, and I'm, I'm going to yeah. give you a way to fix it. Alteris' <laughs> debut album, Grief, came out in early August, just a few months ago. Um, and it's out on iTunes, Spotify, basically anywhere where you would get music. Uh, you can find Alteris. <laughs> it's great music. Uh, what was it? You told us to call it something yesterday. Thrash pop? Thrash pop. Uh, Thrash pop. Yes, yes. That's the so, genre of music we like to coin. We uh, we call our, we. I don't know, people will ask, what kind of music do you guys play? And like we normally describe it as like hard rock, metal, but we want to coin thrash pop. Thrash so, pop, yeah. So kind of if anyone asks who, like, what Alteris is, just say thrash pop. Thrash pop. If that if that even remotely appeals to you, yeah, listen to Alteris. Even if it even if it appeals to you because you don't know what it sounds like, go listen to it. You'll probably yeah. like what it sounds like. J- I just think, try it out. Like, it's totally heavy. It. It's uh, it's melodic. We even have an acoustic song on the album. That's a great uh, song for those that. who like to slow it down a little bit, more mellow, mellow fans. And then, but we 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 definitely uh, we definitely get pretty heavy on the record and. Um, grief honest uh you know everybody's dealt with grief so we're pretty honest in the yeah. lyrical content on the record so i mean check it out um and if you don't like it don't sue me and yeah. uh yeah or us you, you certainly don't you certainly don't have to be a fan of it but if you are that's fantastic and if you're not that's totally cool too yeah we'll we all have our opinion lesser <laughs> yeah that's, that's not a big deal <laughs> yeah, man, look at this guy <laughs> yeah Black Box, oh, I think that's the one you're referring to when you say acoustic. Yes, is Black, Black Box. Box. That, is, that might be one of my favorite songs on the album. It's so cool. It's, like, really nice. I haven't had the chance to listen to the album yet, but I want to. Have you not, dude? I haven't. <laughs> you are slacking. I uh, am slacking. You're right. Uh, that's because okay. the Spotify on my phone is terrible right now. It's, it's totally Make it cool. good. you got to listen to that album, dude. Yeah, I Try think I've, on a premium. I've leaned towards the songs that are... Um, less like don't have as much of the uh scream in it because i'm not super huge on scream they're good good songs like obviously but uh no, dude i feel it i feel the, it. the ones that i've i've grown attached to are i think it was black box feel obviously could ever love because that's the big that's the hit of the album and then um crap what was the name of that last one i will figure it out i will look it up on my phone right now we will find but out those those man. uh Four in particular have been particularly my favorites. Um, can't okay. go back. That's it. Can't go back. I, like, I knew it I like also that. started with a C. Yeah, uh, it's it is a really good album, and that's this is coming from someone who doesn't well, normally listen to like anything in the metal or I guess thrash pop realm of music. Pop. <laughs> so um, it, it is. It really stands out to me as like a better album in that genre, like. It's funny because that's exactly what I would listen to, and I'm the one who has Yeah, this is like yet. your speed. I'm really surprised that you haven't listened to the album. Yet. I know. It, well, you know what? Here's what I did after I saw Alteris play at Cedars like a few weeks ago. I did look up their music on YouTube, and I heard like one or two of their songs. Here's the problem. I can't remember which ones they were. I'm sure you've heard Could Ever Love because that's the big video on Probably. YouTube. Probably. Probably. Um, but I know that I enjoyed both of them a lot. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah, you guys are so nice. That's awesome. I really gonna, appreciate it. I'm gonna make a quick joke. Uh, take a quick shot at a guy that I don't know and have never spoken to. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> is but it he's, Ken Bone? But he's from Alteris. No, I love Ken Bone. I would never make a joke about him. Uh, <laughs> when I when I was showing a friend of mine who's like really into metal, um, Alteris because he's not from the area, so he'd never heard of you guys. I was showing yeah. him and I was like, you know, this is this is them. I'm sure you'd like them. They're definitely your speed. And so he listened to the music and he was saying, he, he enjoyed it. He said it was really good. But uh, he had one comment to say, and it was from the Could Ever Love video, I believe. And he goes, yeah, it was all great. Everybody was really cool. The video was good. Uh, but what the heck was going on with the singer's mustache? That was his oh, one comment. And I, <laughs> and 
And I was like, Jay. what are you talking? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Jay, look at that. He, uh, he has, he's the beard man of the, uh, of the band. Yeah. Um, I dig it. I don't know. I like, <laughs> I, I like what he's got going on. I mean, I mean I, I'm not going to hate him. Like, it is, it's, it's to each their own. I have stupid facial hair. Um. Me too. Yeah, I mean, it's just a thing that everyone does. I just it made me laugh when he pointed it out. Yeah, so that's that's I silly. figured I'm, I'd make a uh, quick so Jake, shot Jake's, at a guy that I don't. Know. J- Jake's the nicest dude in the entire world. Like that's, seriously, so that's good. Hopefully, he. Yeah, I, too. I, I, I had like a fairly in depth conversation with him. He is really cool. Yeah, he he's a very 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 awesome guy, and I'm very lucky. He's our front man because he absolutely kills it. Yeah, his voice um, is on incredible. and off the yeah on and off the stage, man. <clears throat> on stage. It's also funny because I know his girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah, Michelle, Michelle. Um, yeah, like, I'm, no, like, but, I'm in classes with her, and it's, like, really cool. So awesome. I have, like, direct access to the band. Man, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. You got the all-access pass. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I'm like, okay, so I know the drummer, and I know the singer's girlfriend. I think I'm set. Yeah. I think I'm okay. I just know the drummer. <laughs> I got the, I got no, the like, we go way back connection, though. Like, if they were, if, like, we were ever, if I tried to sneak into, like, a show... And the bouncer was carrying me out. I'd be like, "You can't kick me out." Me and the drummer go way back, right, Seth? And you'd look up and he'd be like, "Ah, I don't know that guy." And they'd throw me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I would still be able to say it and not be lying. I'd still get thrown out, but <laughs> you'd get thrown out. But you'd it. get thrown out in the best way possible. Yeah. Um. So you guys have a tour coming up. Let me. Uh, yes, we actually leave to tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow we kick it off in Kent, Ohio. Yeah, um, which, at the out, at the Outpost Concert Club. Try um, my best to be there. And it's called the Sleepless Nights Tour, which is pretty accurate because we never really get any sleep on tour. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're 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 going on tour for a couple weeks, two or three weeks, starting tomorrow. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited to meet new fans and see new cities and yeah, you know, touring touring is quite quite an experience. It's uh, I don't know, like just traveling around the world and just meeting people and like hearing their stories and playing songs for them and just um the whole room is just is such a good vibe and you know like we've all been to concerts and um, yeah you, you go there and you sing your favorite songs and you just have this moment of empathy with every single person in that room and you know you can forget about all the hate and negativity going on in the world for for those who are how, however long you're there and uh, it's just it's truly incredible what what the power of music oh, yeah. um, entails and it's just uh, you know I'm incredibly lucky to play in a band and see it firsthand and uh, be on the opposite end instead of in the crowd being on stage and uh, creating creating things that people could just really relate to and share so yeah that's yeah. awesome dude I'm gonna yeah. run down a quick list I'm just gonna say the cities just run down real quick they'll be going to Kent Ohio. Nashville, Tennessee, Youngstown, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, Elgin, Illinois. I should have looked up how to pronounce that from yesterday. Good job. <laughs> Lansing, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Louisville, Kentucky, Marietta, Georgia, and Youngstown, Ohio again to close it out. So if you're from any of those areas or near any of those areas, definitely go look up their schedule and see exactly where they'll be in on what day. You can find it on their Twitter. Heck at yeah. Old Band. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it should be awesome. I'm, I'm excited. I, I I'm really am going to try to find my way to to Thursday's show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see. You got it, man. We, we'll probably do. take the stage around 945. And yeah. uh, it's going to be sweaty. It's going to be a hot one. So. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's going to be sweaty. That's, yeah, that's oh, the it, selling it gets, point. Yeah, Kidding. man. It gets, it gets sweaty, dude. It's, it's intense up in those lights. And then, you know, people throwing down in the pit. It it's fun. It's a good you good time. You throwing down in the pit. Yeah, that's right. I leave <laughs> my drums. Believe that. I go clothesline someone in the audience and I get yeah. back on stage. Never seen yeah. a drummer crowd surf before, have you? I have. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually sure it's happened. Uh yeah, Josh Dunn from Twenty One Pilots gets on like a like a yeah. riser and I would they, imagine they put him on the crowd. Yeah, those so two, that, that's there's cool. two of them and they're both like the hypest people in the world. Oh, they, dude, I know what a performance they put on. I wouldn't be surprised if they played a show while crowd surfing. Like, yeah, the crowd just absolutely. also surfed their instruments. It, absolutely. Yeah, hey, those two are like spectacular. I don't know if yeah, I said it on podcast or off, but when it comes to like popular music and like big name bands, Twenty One Pilots deserve it more than any other like musician to me personally like every piece of fame and like any recognition they've gotten 100% deserved 
great. I can agree to that. Two great. They guys. are really good. Two great musicians. It's like really awesome to see. And they're still representing Ohio. Yeah, actually, um, I'm I wasn't like a an early of arriver to the party of Twenty One Pilots, but I was kind of in that middle group, um, because Seth, your brother, was an early arriver. Yeah, yeah. And he was he's been super into them uh, for quite some time. Uh, yeah, and it was absolutely. actually him that got me to listen to them in the first place. So, yeah, man, he got me into them too. So yeah, like that was really awesome. I was like pre fam, but not pre or like post being able to say I was like hipster about it. Right, um, right. I was like right in that middle group, which is cool because then I don't sound like super weird when I say, "Oh, I knew them before they were famous." I can just say, "Yeah, I knew them at a point in time. They're cool." <laughs> yeah. So yeah, big ups to to Jake for that. Yeah. He, oh, he's the yes. man. Yeah, it's been like I think it was like a year and a half ago. I don't know. I saw it on my time hop. Uh the like Instagram picture of me when I was like, "Oh man, thanks Jake for getting me into them." And I was like, "Oh yeah, that did happen." Time hop's a great app. Oh, I know. I love time hop. I should have like a weekly time hop post for me because I've <laughs> yeah. had some pretty exceptional ones this week. Heck yeah, dude. Um Yes. There was one from a year ago today it was actually yeah today where i said uh i think it was like whoops lmao has become the motto of my life <laughs> and i was like yeah no that that still sums it up even today uh that's a great way to describe my life heck yeah weekly time post from steven i like it yeah that's that would be that would go over so much better than weekly music it'd just be weekly cringy thing i said years ago oh yeah yeah there was one where it was from like five years ago so it's it's scary at least i know anything i said from like two years and like onward um were intentionally sarcastic because i've been ridiculously sarcastic for the last few years um but five years ago was like that weird shaky point where it's like was i sarcastic did i actually mean it because um (laughs) i said something like wow my my white boy swag's really on point today xd and i was like Dear Lord, I hope I said that sarcastically. Because <laughs> the idea that that came into my head and out of my mouth seriously is, like, terrifying. Yeah, you know what? Knowing you and knowing what I know about you, <laughs> that had to be sarcasm. Ago? Knowing me from five years ago, though? Oh. No, no, no. That's still five years ago? Okay, that that's was, what, like, freshman year? Of, freshman of year. School? Yeah, I think that still was sarcasm. Okay, good. That's reassuring. I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like, pretty, I'm, like, 70% sure that was sarcasm. Because that's, like... Ugh, exceptionally cringe. Exceptional cringe. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the last thing we're we'll gonna be talking about. If you're, if you listened to last week and uh, you're wondering where's the talk about gaming that they said they'd talk about last week, uh, we meant two weeks from then. <laughs> yeah. So next week. Yeah. Next week for sure. Next week for sure. We'll be sure to tell you that we're gonna be talking about it the week after. Yeah, it's like, and next week, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna tell you exactly why we're the putting it off till the we week after this week. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to hear about the Nintendo Switch? Mm. Oh, Too bad. That's unfortunate. That we're seems gonna unfortunate. Mo- <laughs> we're gonna keep moving it back until everyone loses interest. Yeah. Until it becomes relevant again. Yeah. All right. So we had a bit of a Q and A on Twitter uh, when we were coming up on the big day which was supposed to be yesterday, but it's not today. Um, And we got quite a few questions. Uh, I'm trying to see. The way hashtags work is weird because I can't find all of them. Yeah, it's real weird. But I think think if you go to latest, top only has a few. Latest, I think, is all of them. So that is how I'm discovering the best way to look at it. So we're going to run over a few. Um, We're kind of cutting it close. We're not cutting it close, but we're at a decent time point, so we might skip over a few. so apologies if we don't say your question, but I think you answered them all on Twitter. So at least people won't feel like their their question wasn't answered. Um, yeah. But we're going to run through some of the best things to talk about. Uh, these first few are actually really good. So the first one that I have on my screen, uh, I don't know if you do, is from at Teresa underscore Sings. Uh, great person. Uh, fan of ours now because of the announcement oh, yeah, for you being on the podcast. She's a saint, man. She's she's amazing. Yeah, really great. Uh, but her question was, what is the funniest thing that has happened before, during, or after a show? All right, let me find this one. Actually, you know what? I'll just answer it honestly on here. Uh, the, I remember what I answered. Uh, the funniest thing that happened uh, before a show, 
I, I don't recall anything crazy happening before a show. Maybe like, I don't know, uncontrollably peeing because of coffee. I don't know, I guess. That's, but, uh, that's pretty funny. The funniest that's thing that fair. happened... The funniest thing that happened during the show, uh, my good rhythm guitar player Mike, he was going so hard on stage, just 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 killing it, and he actually fell through the stage. Whoa! Um, yeah, yeah, that was it was awesome. Once I knew he was okay, I I, I had to laugh. But uh, it was in the middle of the song, and then my bass player Zach pulled him out, and it, it was it was great. Um, and the funniest thing that happened after the show, um, we played a festival last year. And um, this woman approached me, and she like, you know, she said, "Great set, everything, and blah blah blah." And she uh, she gave me a hug, and um, like mid hug, she like started kissing my neck, like very <laughs> very sexually, like tongue and every te- tongue and everything. She was killing it. Tongue and doing, everything. Jeez. Dude, yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty intense. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay, uh, you're probably old enough to be my mom, but uh. <laughs> Whoa! I'm, I'm, I'm flattered. My goodness. That yeah. Is... So that you so said that that was that one. So those are those are some great stories. I can't imagine yeah. falling through a show or uh, falling through a floor. Yeah, I could. I couldn't even believe it, man. It was. It's it's been common. Didn't uh, someone like relatively big named also fall through a floor? I like, I don't even. Didn't know. it happen to Biebs like twice? I seem Maybe. to recall it happening to someone, and I, my mind automatically just always jumps to Justin Bieber. But I think <laughs> it happened to him on two separate occasions. It happened to someone it, on two separate it occasions. It might have. Where they just kept falling through floors. It's like, you might need to work on that. <laughs> Whether it be you or the floor guy, someone's got to work Ye- on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Either lose some weight or fix the floor. Yeah, lose some weight or fire your floor guy because he's out to get you. He's <laughs> exactly. ringing the floor to drop out on you. All right, so go into the next question, which is an interesting one that I'm I'm excited to hear the answer for because it's from at Katie Gabriel, and it is what has been the most life changing moment in your career. Um, and I remember answering, uh, the most life changing moment in the career was definitely signing our first record contract earlier this year with uh, okay. Revival Recordings from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, you know, as a musician. If you're looking to tour and, you know, kind of, I guess, make it in the industry, you're looking to get out of that local band scene. And so for the longest time, I was dreaming of getting out of the local band scene and actually getting that national spotlight, um, maybe even international spotlight, uh, you know, and to do that, you would need to sign a, a record contract to have those contacts and those outlets. And finally, we, we hooked up with um, Revival Recordings. And we signed our first record contract in March of this year. Um, and we were actually talking to a few labels, but they, they just, their deal was undeniable. It was just like, we have to get this. And, and they just worked so hard there and everyone's so kind. They're a smaller label, so it, it's really, it's a lot better for us because yeah. we're on a label that's not completely oversaturated with music. And um, I think we fit in quite well. And uh, so that was definitely the most life changing event to happen in our career so far so. yeah when i heard about it uh when it happened that was like so amazing to me because like i i do a lot of things uh music is one of them but it's not like one of the bigger ones uh where it's like you don't know if you've like made it until this specific thing happens and so in my head i'm always like man i can't wait like for this to happen like this would be so cool and in music that is the thing like that's the what you want to happen is to like get that record label and get signed yeah and so when i heard that you guys got it i was so like happy like that was so cool to say that like this guy who i knew from childhood that was like really great friend of mine and now he's off in a like with a record deal with a band and they're great and i was like really happy for you guys so that's that's so awesome thank you thank you very much man yeah it's it's great and then i'm sure you will have the same feelings when I get the same thing. Yeah. Not not the Dude, same record deal, but I, I sure whatever so. it is I get. In the possibly near future. Yeah. Yes. When I become when we become super famous. When I op- when I open for you guys and then you subsequently also open for me. Yes. <laughs> and I'm there recording the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, and Chris, Chris is our sound yes. guy. 
When I we mean, live that I'm dream. technically studying to be the sound guy. Exactly. We're gr- Dude, we, we, we work might perfectly. need a sound engineer in the future, so... Yeah, work hard, Chris. I will... I'll be, I will work harder in that area of my major. I'll be your guys' <laughs> tour therapist. Because I'm a psychology <laughs> major. I'll make sure no one goes crazy on tour. There you go. Well, you already have a leg behind on that one because Psy- I'm already crazy. Psychology, and I'm not even on tour yet. Psychology, though, goes super far. Like, I could do something like marketing really well. Because with like, psychology, okay. you you know thought processes kind of well. So if you know thought processes, marketing becomes great because you know what you what to market to. Um, so, yeah, psychology goes pretty deep. A lot of people yeah. think it's just like a you can be a therapist type deal. But there's a lot that goes into it. Which is why a lot of people just have it as a minor, because they specialize in one thing, but also have that psychological background. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty great uh, major. It worked perfectly in the two of my, like, best friends from back home that we hung out, like, all the time. Uh, One of us was a criminal justice major, uh, I'm a psychology major, and then the third was a history major, and we realized it would make the perfect law firm. (laughs) Who are these friends? It's uh, Bryson Parker. Oh my god, wait, which yeah. one's in criminal justice? Bryce is a criminal justice really? major, and Parker's a history major, yeah. So we were going to open a law firm where uh, where Bryce did the like detective and lawyering work, and then I did the like profiling, and Parker did uh, like, the research, because he's, he's, he knows history. So it was like, you know perfect. what, let me, that was let the me dream. be the TCOM major here, and uh, you know, I'll just advertise for the law firm. Yeah, you can be, our, you can be the voice of our radio commercials. For the yes. law firm. <laughs> Even though I'm totally against law firms. <laughs> yeah. I dig it. That's the way to do it. All right. It's, you know what? It's fine. I'm getting paid. <laughs> Let's go on to the next question. I want to do like a series of serious ones and then a lot of joking ones and then end on like one or two more serious ones. So let's see. Let's do one more serious and then go to the joking ones. Okay. Um, hmm. Here's a serious one. Would you rather be a midget or seven feet tall? What? Dude, was... I'd rather be seven feet tall just so I could freaking play in the NBA and you know dunk. Yeah, I'm going to call that serious, though. That is from uh, at oh shit Macy. Uh, great yeah. At Macy, tag. that's a but great question. That is, that is actually fantastic. a really good question because um, in terms of like heights uh, between me and then you two – I'm. I would be the equivalent of the seven feet tall, and you two would be the equivalent of the midget because we're both like leaning closer. I'm like eight inches off of being seven foot, and you guys are like eight inches. Well, you'd be a little bit more than eight inches yes. off of yes. being midgets. I don't know what the the height limit for a little person is. Actually, I do. Do you? That's a yeah, great I piece of trivia. It's like <laughs> if you're, it's either if you're over the age of eighteen or twenty one. It's one of those two, and you're under the height of five feet. You are legally considered, like, a dwarf. Oh, wow. See, I have to, like, avoid what I say here because it's so easy to be offensive. Uh, I have tendencies to slip of the tongue offend people, and I, and I <laughs> wouldn't want to offend the, uh, the community of little people. I guess by no, saying no. midget, That's I've already That's just what the close. law says. It's either um, 18 or 21, and if you're under 5 well, feet, you well, are, like, yeah, but when legally you said a that, midget. When you said that, my head went to that commercial for the car seats. <laughs> with the Disney princesses where it was like four foot nine is the magic number and, and and that was like the first thing that popped in my head and I like smiled internally but then went wow that's awful I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like four foot nine where they where she like zaps with her magic wand the fairy godmother hits the, the, the like car and it like spawns a car seat like that's that's where my head went to that commercial so I feel bad but I'm not gonna not laugh at that <laughs> that's right yeah, exactly. I think I think I'd also rather be seven feet tall. Um, as much as I dislike a lot of aspects of being tall, bi- biggest example being any time I have to get up from this desk, uh, I I very much don't fit perfectly into it. If I was shorter, I could just like lift myself out. But I've, I'm yeah, like thirty percent or like eighty percent leg, so my I'm legs only are five, just trapped. Five six and a half, and it's great. <laughs> Yeah, like being short has uh, both heights have their ups and downs. There's never wow, that was like the best pun I've ever done in my life. Yes, fantastic. that was amazing. Um, oh my god, you didn't say that. <laughs> yes, I didn't even catch that until now. Yeah, I said it and then I went whoa. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, but there's like pros and cons to to all heights. So like people that are sad to be short because they're short, uh-huh. don't be. You you're just as good off as someone who's sad that's they're tall when they want to be short. Yes, Every exactly. height has its perfect spots. You want to do one more question? Uh, we'll, 
let's move on to like two like really joking questions and then we'll end oh, yeah. on, a, on a serious note um let's see i i had some great joking questions that i wanted if you had to be handcuffed to one person forever who would it be other than scarlett johansson because we all know um, you're, you're if you guys don't fashion. know i'm in scarlett love with scarlett johansson, johansson and i'm actually yeah. her future husband yeah um but uh, no, I, I think I put my rhythm guitarist, Mike Alteris, Michael Alteris, um, Mike Dulé is his name, and uh, I'd love to be handcuffed to Mike, um, because he is probably, he's one of the smartest people I know, he's tough as hell, and he's funny, like, yeah. there, you, there you go, like, he could defend can, me, he can make me laugh, and then he could, together. exactly, yeah. and then, and then he could, uh, he could provide some insight as well, and then. So yeah, I, I'd rather be, I'd, I'd like to be handcuffed to Mike. That is a, Actually, that's a you know great what? question. Can I interject with one of my questions? Because I just came up with one. Did yes. You? Yeah. All right. So, and this is an honest to God question. If you had to choose to go gay for one celebrity, who would it be? Wait, what's that you cut out for a second? For one celebrity uh, or like one like person? No, for celebrities. Celebrities, celebrities. only. If you go had gay to go for gay, one celebrity? If you had to go gay for one celebrity, who would it be? Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> okay, That's you know what? I, I should have seen that coming, actually. Oh, dude. See, my answer to that question had always been Jared Leto. And I think it might still be Jared Leto. Uh, oh, what a guy. His, his performance as the Joker was a little shaky in terms of whether or not I'd still go gay for him. Um, yeah, that's a that's a very real and existing chart. Um, I mean, yes. I'd probably just go gay for Will Smith. Will Smith is oh, the a, one. Will Smith. I am legend. But, Except, you know what? That is actually one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Great. We talked about that movie last week, actually. Uh, we did. And and its similarity to iRobot, just yes. with zombies. Yes. Um, yeah, I think my, my secret answer, not my secret answer, but my, my lesser known answer would be the DJ Zed. If you've oh, ever yeah. seen he's, him. Yeah, yeah. He's got, like, if, if, if I were gay, he would be the perfect, like, boy next door person. It's kind of funny. Um, I made that joke to a friend, of, like a female friend of mine, and she was very confused by it, uh, and it and it made me realize how weird it sounded in my head. But I stick by it. Zed's Zed's That's good. <laughs> Be confident. Do yeah, it. obviously you gotta stand by whatever you do, unless it's like illegal, in which case you might want to stop doing it. In um, which case, make sure you're doing it for a good reason. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do one more question. We'll, we'll end on a bit of a more serious note because what are we at? We're, we're approaching an hour, so we're going to go yeah. a little bit over an hour again. Um, at least we won't be an hour and a half this time. But yeah. uh, this question is from at Evan Cigarettes, and the question is, do you have any advice for people who are feeling sad and have a lot of problems? And this is a very um, good question, a very yeah, important question. Yeah, this is actually question my favorite question. Uh, this is a very important question to me because, you know, I often... You know, throughout my life, I've dealt with, like, depression and anxiety and stuff. And so this is a really important topic to me. And, um, uh, yeah, I have advice for people feeling sad. Um, I, I believe I said, um, surround yourself with things that make you happy. Like, things, people that just make you smile and feel good about yourself. You know, stick by those people. And really, you know, you can find a safe haven within them. And then, um, listen to things that make you laugh. Um... I often cope with depression and anxiety by listening to stand-up comedy, because um, I just love laughing and smiling and just, you know, it might be like a, a really just crude joke, but you know what, if it makes you laugh, then that's all you really need, you know, like that's really important to, to laugh, and, um, and just always remember that, you know, like everything else, I mean, I know it sounds kind of morbid, but sadness ends. And, um, you know, nothing lasts forever, and that includes sadness, since it's not going to be forever. And, you know, sometimes it's just it just exists, and you, you, you go through day to day, and it really sucks. But, you know what, just try to keep a, a positive mind through it. And, like I said, just surround yourself with things that make you feel good. And, um, you know, life is truly, truly incredible. And um, I don't know. That's, yeah. that's, you know, like, that's Absolutely. a very important topic to me, and, you know, I really like traveling the country and meeting people and hearing their stories, and even though they might be really, really tragic stories, you know, just the fact that they can find peace and comfort through talking to people, like strangers like me and the rest of my band, is is remarkable, and I think it's really important to be kind to one another, um, uplift each other, uh, and 
you know, encourage one another. Don't tear each other down, man. Absolutely. You know, there's not enough time here in life to sit here and just be bitter and just completely tear someone down and be uh, just totally shitty to them, you know, just, just be good. Just be good to them. And you know what? Some people might irritate you. I get it. But, you know, at the end of the day, all we have right now is each other. So, really, just uplift each other, man. Just be good. And, you know, that's all I really have to say about that. Absolutely. That's really well put. Um, I know, for me personally, I'm, uh, as I said, a psychology major. So, that's a big thing of what I study is, is like, people that are that are struggling mentally. And it's a big ins- inspiration to me is, um, <laughs> is people that struggle mentally. Uh, and so, I know with... with this podcast, uh, we, we never say it like vocally, but it is. In, I know it's in the back of my mind, and I know it's in the back of Chris's mind. Is that we are we want to be here to help people. Like we do this podcast both for our own entertainment. It's a nice way for us to hang out and pass the time. But we we want to make something that people can listen to and uh, and like smile and and really like improve the the outcome of their day. And I know all Terrace feels the same way with their music. Uh, I, I know you, and I've seen a lot of stuff from a lot of your bandmates, that you guys just make music because you want to help people. Like, you want you want people to listen to it and smile, and because you guys right. listen to it and smile. And it's so important to have things like that in your life, to have Absolutely. things where you can, you can go to and say, like, you know, everything might be falling apart around me, but I, I have some stability. Like, I have something that I can, I can stand by. Um, yes, sir. And the, the biggest thing I always like to hammer home is uh, d- don't be afraid to go to people for help. Like, don't be afraid to ask help. Don't feel like you're being weak if you are you need to ask for help, if you feel like, I don't, I don't know. Because I had the same problem. Uh, I, I struggled a lot with depression and anxiety. Um, and especially over the summer, it got to, like, a really big break- breaking point where I really just felt like there wasn't anything left for me. Like, I, I felt like I was kind of just living this dead end um and what what helped me the most more than anything else was finally like swallowing my not even swallowing my pride just accepting that i needed help and going to somebody and saying hey i need help can you help me and they did and i got a lot of help and i got a lot of things that like really just made my situation a lot better and i've and i've been doing very well since um this podcast is a great example of it uh, I've had the drive to actually make topics and record and upload and even come out to go to you, Seth, and say like, "Hey, I'm doing this thing. I would really love if you could be a part of it because it's it's great." Um, and so it's don't don't feel weak. Like you're not weak if if you need help. Um, you're not you're not any less of a person because everyone needs help in some way or another. Everyone has something that they struggle with. Even the people that you're going to, they probably also have either gone to or have something that they're struggling with that they would also need to go to someone for. Like that's just how the world works. We need to like come together and help each other because we're all in the same world. So we we should all try to help each other's world. Um, yeah, it's it's such a such an important topic to me. It's such an important topic to you. Um, it's it's yeah. If ever anyone needs anything that's listening, if you're listening and you're you're dealing with stuff and you feel like there's no one to go to, I know my Twitter DMs are open. Uh, Seth's, I'm sure oh, I, dude, there's definitely absolutely. ways to contact him. Even Chris, um, you, you can't hear him because I'm gonna be muting his, his audio in the the podcast. He's been he's been munching away. But uh, I, I'm I know, not the one eating chips. Are you not? Oh no, I'm reading through my my brother's candy. Oh, are you? Is that been that you? That is not me. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, I'll be sure to. Yeah, to I have like, that I out, like but... nine, nine Reese's. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, like, I just, that is not I just assumed me. it was, was Chris. Here, I um, was here looking at my Snapchat. Okay. Oh, oh well, okay. Well, yeah. But uh, all of us, we all have ways to contact us. We've got, I, me and Seth have Twitters. Chris will plug his Snapchat when we're when we're wrapping up. Um, yeah. there there will always be a way to contact us, even through YouTube. You can. If you're watching on YouTube, which you probably are, because that's the only place I can upload as of now. Um, yeah, come just on, SoundCloud. Find a way. Yeah, come on, SoundCloud. Get get with it. <laughs> you find a way to contact one of us. There's because there's never a situation where no one cares. Um, and and I felt like that where I would be there sitting are and I'd be like, eight billion people in the world, someone cares. Yeah, I'd be sitting there and I'd and I'd say like, well, 
I mean, I'm not going to talk to anyone because no one really truly, like, cares. Like, if I, my thought process was if I went to someone, I'd just be, like, impeding their day. You're not. You would never impede anyone's day. Um, they, they would probably love to help you. Like, more often than not, if you go to someone and say, hey, I need some help, you'll be helping them as well. Because the feeling of helping someone is is great. It's a great feeling, and so don't it's a feel mutually like, beneficial agreement. Yeah, don't feel like you're bothering them or you're you're in, like harming their situation because you're not. Um, You'll be amazed at how many people feel the same way that you do yeah. when you open up about it. And and so I know, especially in my case, it's it's impossible to believe that being said. Um, but the the big impactful part is hearing from a person that they care and that they're there. So if you're in that spot that I was in or that a lot of people are in, I care, Chris cares, Seth cares, someone cares. Altaris cares. Altaris cares. Altaris cares. That seems unfortunate cares. We're, we're here. Um, we all so care. If you, if you do need help, let us know. Let someone know. Like, we'd love to. We'd love to help. And I will seriously make a Twitter after this, I yeah, swear. get on that, Chris. <laughs> Um, you know, so, what? I'm going to start doing it right now. Yeah. So on that note, um, I think this is where we're going to wrap up. I think that's a really nice note to close on. Um, yes. I, I want to make mention of the one joke that we made that I, that I feel like needs to be made again, um, to close on that, that specific topic we were just talking about. And that is, um, even Hitler had people that cared about him. Oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> We said this. We said this last week, and it was my favorite thing, uh, or yesterday, and it was my favorite thing. Where, if you if you feel like nobody cares, if people cared about Hitler, someone cares about you. And we're we're launching uh, a fictional T-shirt company where our shirt will say, uh, "You're better than Hitler." That is that is our that is our motto. That is our slogan. If you ever feel like like really down, just know, you're better than Hitler. So you're better. Yeah, significantly. Like that's right. Substantially better than yeah. Hitler. Like like Hitler's like ground level, and you're like you're like the sky. You're space. That's how that's how substantially better you are than Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, I think this is where we're gonna wrap up. Uh, we we're gonna give out our our social media shoutouts. Uh, if you liked me, if you wanted to hear more from me, um, you can find me on Twitter at Stevie3D. That is S T E V I E. The number three V. Um, you can find me on Snapchat on the same name. I don't use Snapchat super often, but if you are a Snapchat frequenter, I will make time to use it just for you. It'll be super special. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitch if you are a live stream watcher, uh, if you enjoy video games. Uh, Twitch.tv slash The Everyman, all one word. Um, I stream, hopefully I'm going to get into the schedule of five times a week. Um, starting next week, I'll be streaming tonight, although no one will know this because uh, the way my schedule works, I'll be uploading uh, after I stream. So I will have already streamed by this time, but you'll still be able to find me. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah. Uh, Chris, what are your social media shoutouts this week? See, right now, right now, I'm trying to figure out uh, what my Twitter um, tag is going to be, okay? Um, I will update people with that later but for right now i'll give you my snapchat and it's all one word it's death metal demon i was 15 i need to defend myself yeah. every time i say it it's a wonderful name it's uh, not we'll be sure to throw your uh your twitter link once you get it in the, the description of the video because uh, i swear to god it's it's gonna be there yeah so i'm doing it right now yeah his twitter my twitter his snapchat my snapchat my twitch and now seth you've got a few um, my Twitter and Instagram are at Seth underscore Alteris, S-E-T-H underscore A-L-T-E-R-A-S. Uh, my Snapchat, um, is S-E-T-H-D-O-N-C-H-E-S-S, -S, my first and last name, no capitals, no space. Uh, you know what? You can send booty pics if you want. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> always accept the uh, booty yes. pics. I always, I always make that joke. Um... <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if my parents are gonna be happy with that one, but uh, yeah, you gotta be of age. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Send legal booty pics. You don't, <laughs> legal yeah, booty legal. Pics. Yeah, like that's put that put, put an asterisk next to that one. Booty pics, mm -hmm. asterisks. 
you must be of age. So, um, no, but seriously, guys, you know what? Um, I love talking to um, new people, and I try to respond to everyone. I'm pretty sure, like people that have my Twitter notifications on, hate me because I really do try to get back to everyone. Um, oh, you guys are super active on Twitter, all of you. Like, yeah, band, yeah, man. All the band I, members. I, I like. I really like getting back to everyone, and it might reach the point one day where. I mean, it, it does now, like, where we struggle to get back to everyone because, you know, you guys are just killing it with blowing us up, which is truly, truly amazing. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, we always try to we always try to respond when we can. So get in yeah. contact and uh, talk to Steve and talk to Chris. These guys are awesome, and I thank them so much for having me oh, on the podcast. Thanks. thanks for being here, dude. We, I we love you guys. You guys have to so do this I love sometime. you too, man. You're also, so I got cute. my Twitter name. Fictional group hug. Oh, what? I actually got my uh, my Twitter name right now. <laughs> okay, it's, uh, it. at, it's at CPT Anarchy. Ooh, right. that's a that's good one. And if it's not that, it's CPT Anarchy 97, and I have a very short attention span. All right, so be sure to follow that. Uh, I will, you know, we can put it in the description. I'll, I'll Yeah, we'll it. still, I'll throw everything in the description. I should start doing that. Um, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. A, it should have been happening for the last three episodes, but I'll get on it now. Yeah, um, yeah it was a great, great avenue, Seth. Like, we... We'll most certainly have to find time, uh, probably post concert or post tour, to uh, to do this again. It's been a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah. man! I, I can't wait. Um, we gotta let's all hang out sometime. You know, uh, when we get back from tour and then maybe at a show. I mean, yeah. you know, I you know that'd be really cool. Play some we'll video games, time. eat some pizza. Yes, that sounds. You had me a pizza, perfect. dude. You had me. Um, yeah, dude. Thank you guys so much, and I appreciate it. And I can't wait to do this again. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. Yeah, man. And as always, on behalf of Chris Vittorio and Seth Donchis, I'm Stephen Bridenstine. Thank you for listening to That Seems Unfortunate. Be sure to check us out next week and subscribe if you enjoyed what you heard. Thanks, everybody. See you later. See you guys. Peace out. Bye. Seth, I hope to God you recorded this time.